early study of triangles can be traced to the second millennium BC in Egyptian mathematics, Rhind mathematical papyrus, and Babylonian mathematics. Systematic study of trigonometric functions began in Hellenistic mathematics, reaching India as part of Hellenistic astronomy. In Indian astronomy, the study of trigonometric functions flourished in the Gupta period, especially due to Aryabhata 6th century CE. During the Middle Ages, the study of trigonometry continued in Islamic mathematics, hence it was adopted as a separate subject in the Latin West beginning in the Renaissance with Regiomontanus. The development of modern trigonometry shifted during the Western Age of Enlightenment, beginning with 17th-century mathematics Isaac Newton and James Stirling and reaching its modern form with Leonard Euler 1748. Topic. Etymology The term «trigonometry» was derived from Greek trigonon trigonon triangle", and matron metron measure". The modern word «sign» is derived from the Latin word sinus, which means «bay», «bosom» or «fold» is indirectly, via Indian, Persian and Arabic transmission, derived from the Greek term chord bow string chord the greek term was adopted into sanskrit as jaya bow string later also in the variant jiva sanskrit jiva was rendered adopted into arabic as jiba written jb jb this was then interpreted as the genuine arabic word jb meaning bosom fold bay either by the Arabs or by a mistake of the European translators such as Robert of Chester, who translated J.B. into Latin as sinus. Particularly Fibonacci's sinus rectus arcus proved influential in establishing the term sinus. The words, minute, and second, are derived from the Latin phrases partes minute prime and partes minute secunde. These roughly translate to, first small parts, and Second small parts. Topic Development. Topic Ancient Near East. The ancient Egyptians and Babylonians had known of theorems on the ratios of the sides of similar triangles for many centuries. However, as pre-Hellenic societies lacked the concept of an angle measure, they were limited to studying the sides of triangles instead. The Babylonian astronomers kept detailed records on the rising and setting of stars, the motion of the planets, and the solar and lunar eclipses, all of which required familiarity with angular distances measured on the celestial sphere. Based on one interpretation of the Plimpton 322 cuneiform tablet, c. 1900 BC, some have even asserted that the ancient Babylonians had a table of secants. There is, however, much debate as to whether it is a table of Pythagorean triples, a solution of quadratic equations, or a trigonometric table. The Egyptians, on the other hand, used a primitive form of trigonometry for building pyramids in the second millennium BC. The Rhind Mathematical Papyrus, written by the Egyptian scribe Amas c. 1680–1620 BC, contains the following problem related to trigonometry. If a pyramid is 250 cubits high and the side of its base 360 cubits long, what is its sect? Ahm's solution to the problem is the ratio of half the side of the base of the pyramid to its height, or the run-to-rise ratio of its face. In other words, the quantity he found for the sect is the cotangent of the angle to the base of the pyramid and its face. Topic Classical antiquity Ancient Greek and Hellenistic mathematicians made use of the chord. Given a circle and an arc on the circle, the chord is the line that subtends the arc. A chord's perpendicular bisector passes through the center of the circle and bisects the angle. One half of the bisected chord is the sign of one half the bisected angle, that is, chord theta equals two sin theta two. Display style mathrm chord theta equals two sin frac theta two, and consequently the sine function is also known as the half chord. 
Due to this relationship, a number of trigonometric identities and theorems that are known today were also known to Hellenistic mathematicians, but in their equivalent chord form. Although there is no trigonometry in the works of Euclid and Archimedes, in the strict sense of the word, there are theorems presented in a geometric way rather than a trigonometric way that are equivalent to specific trigonometric laws or formulas. For instance, propositions 12 and 13 of Book 2 of the Elements are the laws of cosines for obtuse and acute angles, respectively. Theorems on the lengths of chords are applications of the law of sines. An Archimedes theorem on broken chords is equivalent to formulas for sines of sums and differences of angles. To compensate for the lack of a table of chords, mathematicians of Aristarchus' time would sometimes use the statement that, in modern notation, sin alpha, sin beta the father of trigonometry, Hipparchus was the first to tabulate the corresponding values of arc and chord for a series of angles, although it is not known when the systematic use of the 360 degrees circle came into mathematics, it is known that the systematic introduction of the 360 degrees circle came a little after Aristarchus of Samos composed on the sizes and distances of the Sun and Moon ca. 260 BC, since he measured an angle in terms of a fraction of a quadrant. It seems that the systematic use of the 360 degrees circle is largely due to Hipparchus and his table of chords. Hipparchus may have taken the idea of this division from Hypsicles who had earlier divided the day into 360 parts, a division of the day that may have been suggested by Babylonian astronomy. In ancient astronomy, the zodiac had been divided into 12 signs or 36 decans. A seasonal cycle of roughly 360 days could have corresponded to the signs and decans of the zodiac by dividing each sign into 30 parts and each decan into 10 parts. It is due to the Babylonian sexagesimal numeral system that each degree is divided into 60 minutes and each minute is divided into 60 seconds. Menelaus of Alexandria ca. 100 AD wrote in three books his Spheirica. In Book 1, he established a basis for spherical triangles analogous to the Euclidean basis for plane triangles. He establishes a theorem that is without Euclidean analog, that two spherical triangles are congruent if corresponding angles are equal, but he did not distinguish between congruent and symmetric spherical triangles. Another theorem that he establishes is that the sum of the angles of a spherical triangle is greater than 180 degrees. Book 2 of Spheirica applies spherical geometry to astronomy. And Book 3 contains the theorem of Menelaus. He further gave his famous rule of six quantities. Later, Claudius Ptolemy ca. 90 ca. 168 AD expanded upon Hipparchus chords in a circle in his Almagest, or the mathematical syntaxis. The Almagest is primarily a work on astronomy, and astronomy relies on trigonometry. Ptolemy's table of chords gives the lengths of chords of a circle of diameter 120 as a function of the number of degrees n in the corresponding arc of the circle, for n ranging from one half to 180 by increments of one half. The thirteen books of the Almagest are the most influential and significant trigonometric work of all antiquity. A theorem that was central to Ptolemy's calculation of chords was what is still known today as Ptolemy's theorem, that the sum of the products of the opposite sides of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the product of the diagonals. A special case of Ptolemy's theorem appeared as Proposition 93 in Euclid's data. Ptolemy's theorem leads to the equivalent of the four sum and difference formulas for sine and cosine that are today known as Ptolemy formulas, although Ptolemy himself used chords instead of sine and cosine. Ptolemy further derived the equivalent of the half angle formula sin 2 x 2 equals 1 minus cos x 2 display style sin caret 2 left frac x 2 right equals frac 1 cos x 2 Ptolemy used these results to create his trigonometric tables, but whether these tables were derived from Hipparchus' work cannot be determined. Neither the tables of Hipparchus nor those of Ptolemy have survived to the present day, although descriptions by other ancient authors leave little doubt that they once existed. Pythagoras discovered many of the properties of what would become trigonometric functions. 
The Pythagorean theorem, P2 plus B2. Topic H2 is a representation of the fundamental trigonometric identity sin 2 x plus cos 2 x. 1. The length 1 is the hypotenuse of any right triangle, and has legs length sin x and cos x with x being one of the two non-right angles. With this in mind, the identity upon which trigonometry is based turns out to be the Pythagorean theorem. Topic. Indian mathematics Some of the early and very significant developments of trigonometry were in India. Influential works from the 4th–5th century, known as the Siddhantas of which there were five, the most important of which is the Surya Siddhanta first defined the sign as the modern relationship between half an angle and half a chord, while also defining the cosine, versine, and inverse sine. Soon afterwards, another Indian mathematician and astronomer, Aryabhata (476–550 AD), collected and expanded upon the developments of the Siddhantas in an important work called the Aryabhatiya. The Siddhantas and the Aryabhatiya contain the earliest surviving tables of sine values and versine (1 minus cosine) values in 3.75 degrees intervals from 0 degrees to 90 degrees, to an accuracy of four decimal places. They used the words jya for sine, kojya for cosine, ukrama jya for versine, and akram jya for inverse sine. The words jya and kojya eventually became sine and cosine respectively after a mistranslation described above. In the 7th century, Bhaskara I produced a formula for calculating the sine of an acute angle without the use of a table. He also gave the following approximation formula for sin x, which had a relative error of less than 1.9%. Sin x approximately equals 16 x pi minus x 5 pi 2 minus 4 x pi minus x 0 x pi display style sin x approximately frac 16 x pi x 5 pi caret 2 4 x pi x q quad left 0 leq x leq pi right later in the 7th century brahmagupta redeveloped the formula 1 minus sin 2 x equals cos 2 x equals sin 2 pi 2 minus x Display style one sin carrot two x equals cos carrot two x equals sin carrot two left frac pi two x right also derived earlier, as mentioned above, and the Brahmagupta interpolation formula for computing sine values, Madhava c. 1400 made early strides in the analysis of trigonometric functions and their infinite series expansions. He developed the concepts of the power series and Taylor series, and produced the power series expansions of sine, cosine, tangent, and arctangent. Using the Taylor series approximations of sine and cosine, he produced a sine table to 12 decimal places of accuracy and a cosine table to 9 decimal places of accuracy. He also gave the power series of pi and the angle, radius, diameter, and circumference of a circle in terms of trigonometric functions. His works were expanded by his followers at the Kerala school up to the 16th century. The Indian text the Yuktabhasa contains proof for the expansion of the sine and cosine functions and the derivation and proof of the power series for inverse tangent, discovered by Madhava. The Yuktabhasa also contains rules for finding the sines and the cosines of the sum and difference of two angles. <laughs> Chinese mathematics 
In China, Aryabhata's table of signs were translated into the Chinese mathematical book of the Kaiyuan Zhenjing, compiled in 718 AD during the Tang dynasty. Although the Chinese excelled in other fields of mathematics such as solid geometry, binomial theorem, and complex algebraic formulas, early forms of trigonometry were not as widely appreciated as in the earlier Greek, Hellenistic, Indian and Islamic worlds. Instead, the early Chinese used an empirical substitute known as Chong Cha, while practical use of plain trigonometry in using the sine, the tangent, and the secant were known. However, this embryonic state of trigonometry in China slowly began to change and advance during the Song dynasty where Chinese mathematicians began to express greater emphasis for the need of spherical trigonometry in calendrical science and astronomical calculations. The polymath Chinese scientist, mathematician and official Shen Kuo used trigonometric functions to solve mathematical problems of chords and arcs. Victor J. Katz writes that in Shen's formula, "...technique of intersecting circles." He created an approximation of the arc S of a circle given the diameter d, sagitta v, and length c of the chord subtending the arc, the length of which he approximated as s equals c plus 2 v 2 d display style s equals c plus frac 2 v caret 2 d sal restivo writes that shen's work in the lengths of arcs of circles provided the basis for spherical trigonometry developed in the 13th century by the mathematician and astronomer guo shoujing 1231 to 1316 as the historians L. Gaucher and Joseph Needham state, Guo Shoujing used spherical trigonometry in his calculations to improve the calendar system and Chinese astronomy. Along with a later 17th-century Chinese illustration of Guo's mathematical proofs, Needham states that Guo used a quadrangular spherical pyramid, the basal quadrilateral of which consisted of one equatorial and one ecliptic arc, together with two meridian arcs, one of which passed through the summer solstice point. By such methods he was able to obtain the du lu degrees of equator corresponding to degrees of ecliptic, the ji cha values of chords for given ecliptic arcs, and the cha lu difference between chords of arcs differing by one degree. Despite the achievements of Shen and Guo's work in trigonometry, another substantial work in Chinese trigonometry would not be published again until 1607, with the dual publication of Euclid's Elements by Chinese official and astronomer Xu Guangqi (1562–1633) and the Italian Jesuit Matteo Ricci (1552–1610). Topic: Middle Ages. Previous works were later translated and expanded in the medieval Islamic world by Muslim mathematicians of mostly Persian and Arab descent, who enunciated a large number of theorems which freed the subject of trigonometry from dependence upon the complete quadrilateral, as was the case in Hellenistic mathematics due to the application of Menelaus' theorem. According to E. S. Kennedy, it was after this development in Islamic mathematics that the first real trigonometry emerged, in the sense that only then did the object of study become the spherical or plane triangle, its sides and angles." Methods dealing with spherical triangles were also known, particularly the method of Menelaus of Alexandria, who developed Menelaus' theorem to deal with spherical problems. However, E. S. Kennedy points out that while it was possible in pre-Islamic mathematics to compute the magnitudes of a spherical figure, in principle, by use of the table of chords and Menelaus' theorem, the application of the theorem to spherical problems was very difficult in practice. In order to observe holy days on the Islamic calendar in which timings were determined by phases of the moon, astronomers initially used Menelaus' method to calculate the place of the moon and stars, though this method proved to be clumsy and difficult. It involved setting up two intersecting right triangles. By applying Menelaus' theorem, it was possible to solve one of the six sides, but only if the other five sides were known. To tell the time from the sun's altitude, for instance, repeated applications of Menelaus' theorem were required. 
For medieval Islamic astronomers, there was an obvious challenge to find a simpler trigonometric method. In the early 9th century AD, Muhammad ibn Musa al Khwarizmi produced accurate sine and cosine tables, and the first table of tangents. He was also a pioneer in spherical trigonometry. In 830 AD, Habish al Hasib al Marwazi produced the first table of cotangents. Muhammad ibn Habir al Harani al Batani al 923 AD discovered the reciprocal functions of secant and cosecant, and produced the first table of cosecants for each degree from 1 degree to 90 degrees. By the 10th century AD, in the work of Abu al Wafa al Buzjani, Muslim mathematicians were using all six trigonometric functions. Abu al-Wafa had sine tables in 0.25 degrees increments, to eight decimal places of accuracy, and accurate tables of tangent values. He also developed the following trigonometric formula. Sin 2 x equals 2 sin x cos x Display style sin 2x equals 2 sin x cos x. A special case of Ptolemy angle addition formula, see above in his original text, Abu al Wafa states, If we want that, we multiply the given sign by the cosine minutes, and the result is half the sine of the double. Abu al Wafa also established the angle addition and difference identities presented with complete proofs. Sin Alpha plus or minus beta equals sin two alpha minus sin alpha sin beta two plus or minus sin two beta minus sin alpha Sin beta two display style sin alpha pm beta equals sqrt sin caret two alpha sin alpha sin beta caret two pm sqrt sin caret two beta sin alpha sin beta caret two sin alpha plus or minus beta equals sin alpha Cos beta plus or minus cos alpha sin beta display style sin alpha pm beta equals sin alpha cos beta pm cos alpha sin beta. For the second one, the text states: We multiply the sine of each of the two arcs by the cosine of the other minutes. If we want the sign of the sum, we add the products, if we want the sign of the difference, we take their difference." He also discovered the law of signs for spherical trigonometry. Sin a sin a equals sin b sin b equals sin c Sin C Display style FRAC Sin A Sin A equals FRAC Sin B Sin B equals FRAC Sin C Sin C Also in the late tenth and early eleventh centuries AD, the Egyptian astronomer Ibn Yunus performed many careful trigonometric calculations and demonstrated the following trigonometric identity. Cuz a cuz B equals cos a plus B plus cos a minus B two display style cos a cos B equals frac cos a plus B plus cos a B two Al Jayani 989 of Al Andalus wrote the Book of Unknown Arcs of a Sphere, which is considered the first treatise on spherical trigonometry. It contains formulae for right handed triangles, the general law of sines, and the solution of a spherical triangle by means of the polar triangle. 
This treatise later had a «strong influence on European mathematics» and his «definition of ratios as numbers» and «method of solving a spherical triangle when all sides are unknown» are likely to have influenced Regiomontanus. The method of triangulation was first developed by Muslim mathematicians, who applied it to practical uses such as surveying and Islamic geography, as described by Abu Rehan Biruni in the early 11th century. Biruni himself introduced triangulation techniques to measure the size of the earth and the distances between various places. In the late 11th century, Omar Khayyam (1048–1131) solved cubic equations using approximate numerical solutions found by interpolation in trigonometric tables. In the 13th century, Nasir al-Din al-Tusi was the first to treat trigonometry as a mathematical discipline independent from astronomy, and he developed spherical trigonometry into its present form. He listed the six distinct cases of a right-angled triangle in spherical trigonometry, and in his On the Sector Figure, he stated the law of sines for plane and spherical triangles, discovered the law of tangents for spherical triangles, and provided proofs for both these laws. Nasir al-Din al-Tusi has been described as the creator of trigonometry as a mathematical discipline in its own right. In 1342, Levi ben Gershon, known as Gersonides, wrote on sines, chords and arcs, in particular proving the sine law for plane triangles and giving five-figure sine tables, a simplified trigonometric table, the Toleta de Martelloio was used by sailors in the Mediterranean Sea during the 14th–15th centuries to calculate navigation courses. It is described by Ramon Lule of Majorca in 1295, and laid out in the 1436 Atlas of Venetian captain Andrea Bianco. In the 15th century, Jamshid al-Kashi provided the first explicit statement of the law of cosines in a form suitable for triangulation. In France, the law of cosines is still referred to as the theorem of Al-Kashi. He also gave trigonometric tables of values of the sine function to four sexagesimal digits equivalent to eight decimal places for each one degree of argument with differences to be added for each one sixtieth of one degree. Ula Beg also gives accurate tables of sines and tangents correct to eight decimal places around the same time. Early modern mathematics Regiomontanus was perhaps the first mathematician in Europe to treat trigonometry as a distinct mathematical discipline, in his De Triangulus Omnimodus written in 1464, as well as his later Tabulae Directionum which included the tangent function, unnamed. The Opus Palatinum de Triangulus of Georg Joachim Redicus, a student of Copernicus, was probably the first in Europe to define trigonometric functions directly in terms of right triangles instead of circles, with tables for all six trigonometric functions. This work was finished by Redicus student Valentin Otho in 1596. In the 17th century, Isaac Newton and James Stirling developed the general Newton Stirling interpolation formula for trigonometric functions. In the 18th century, Leonard Euler's Introductio in Analysen Infinitorum 1748 was mostly responsible for establishing the analytic treatment of trigonometric functions in Europe, deriving their infinite series and presenting Euler's formula E i x equals cos x plus i sin x. Euler used the near modern abbreviations sin, cos, tang, cot, sec, and cosic. Prior to this, Roger Coates had computed the derivative of sine in his Harmonia Mensurarum 1722. Also in the 18th century, Brooke Taylor defined the general Taylor series and gave the series expansions and approximations for all six trigonometric functions. The works of James Gregory in the 17th century and Colin Maclaurin in the 18th century were also very influential in the development of trigonometric series. See also Greek mathematics History of mathematics Trigonometric functions Trigonometry Ptolemy table of chords Ariabatas sine table Rational trigonometry 
equals equals citations and footnotes <laughs>